Hello, conservatives. Tonight, Northeastern University plans to host a three-day retreat on deconstructing power and privilege. Remember the good old days when students just learned history and American literature? And also, a teacher in Texas is caught on camera pretending to shoot Donald Trump during class. You know, love Trump's hate, after all. This is Veely TV. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We will preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we will sentence them to take the first step into a thousand years of darkness. If we fail, at least let our children and our children's children say of us, we justified our brief moment here. We did all that could be done. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Veely TV. There's an article up on campusreform.org right now, which, by the way, is a fantastic website. If you've never checked it out before, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Campusreform.org. Uh, the people there do a, a fantastic job exposing the indoctrination that goes on in, in classrooms across the country. Um, there's an article up right now. Uh, students who value social justice offered privilege retreat is the headline. Let me read further. Northeastern University plans to host a three-day retreat where students will have the opportunity to discuss and learn strategies on how to combat power and privilege. The Dismantle Retreat, De Deconstructing Power and Privilege, that's what it's called, will require students to learn to do the work of resisting oppressive power dynamics and is open to all students regardless of identity because most of us have privileges we benefit from. According to an online description of the event, identifying the presence and impact of privilege can be challenging for those to whom privileges are granted because it is often seen as the norm. It is sort of like asking a fish to notice water or, uh, or uh, birds to discuss air. Uh, during the retreat, students will discuss their past experiences to understand and recognize their privilege, which organizers define as, quote, an unearned advantage or exemption from duty as a special benefit or favor based on someone's social identity group membership while also working to challenge convention and develop astute observations about society. All about privilege. Well, don't you know you're privileged? Don't you know you're privileged? Everybody, just admit it. Let, let's all say it together. Let's all chant, I am privileged. I am. Let's all, let's all shout it from the rooftops, everybody, because apparently that's what the left wants. I had a class my senior year of college. Uh, I can't remember... I, I think it was on, it had something to do, it was a writing class, or I think it was a, a uh, persuasion class, that's what it was, on, uh, on persuasion, you know, how to, how to persuade. Um, and uh, I remember one day, the professor, I don't know how this had to do with persuasion, but the professor did an activity with us, where she took the garbage can um, and put it up on a table in the... Uh, in, in the front of class. And uh, she told us all to get out a piece of paper and crumble it up into a ball. And said, on the count of three, all of you uh, try to throw the, uh, the paper into the waste paper basket sitting on the, on the table. And so we all did it at the same time, trying to throw the paper into the, into the uh, basket. And some of us missed. And uh, the people who were closer to the basket, up towards the front of the class, made it. And then she said at the end of the activity, she goes... This is what white privilege looks like. This is white privilege. Those who are closer had an unfair advantage than those sitting in the back of class. So I just want you to know that I have firsthand experience with this stuff. This isn't a joke. This kind of, uh, you know, these lectures on white privilege, they go on everywhere. This is just one article talking about it, but this is happening across the country. This, this idea that if you're white, you are privileged, and you got to where you are in life 
not because of hard work necessarily, but because you have unfair advantages due to the color of your skin. That's what white privilege says. Let me offer a, uh, what I consider to be a uh, more accurate and perhaps politically incorrect definition of white privilege. Because I, I wrote an article on this, by the way. Let me just share that right now. I, I used to write for uh, the school newspaper my senior year. And towards the end of the year, I did an entire piece on white privilege, uh, debunking it. And, uh, oh, that pissed them off. That, that, made, that, that made the entire school go nuts. The faculty got involved. They had to assemble a safe space to talk about how the article offended some people. I pissed them off, ladies and gentlemen. White privilege is nothing more than a false, manufactured concept designed to silence or shame anyone that is not of color. That's my definition. White privilege is nothing more than a false manufactured concept designed to silence or shame anyone that is not of color. That's what it is. Now they'll tell you, the liberals and those who believe in white privilege will tell you that it has nothing to do with that. I'll probably get some comments on this video or I might get a few uh, emails in response to this video saying, Jason, that's not what white privilege is about. We're not trying to shame anybody. I want you, my audience, to know the truth. That that's what this is. That's what white privilege is all about. It's a way to shame people who are white for simply being white. It's a way to essentially imply that they are racist because they were born white. That they have unfair advantages because of skin pigmentation. Now, I want to say this. I want to say this. In case you haven't noticed, ladies and gentlemen, I'm white. You see, I'm white. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut in uh, a, a fairly decent home. Actually, it was a pretty nice home in a great neighborhood, great neighbors. That wasn't because of the color of my family's skin. I didn't grow up in a nice neighborhood and in a nice house um, because my family is white. The reason why we grew up in a nice neighborhood and in a nice house was because both my father and my mother worked their asses off to uh, make money so that we could live that way, so that we could go on to college. It had nothing to do with white privilege. And yet others who perpetuate the myth of white privilege will tell me otherwise. That my whiteness had something to do with my upbringing. And it didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is free. Nothing is free. I, I mean, you can't just snap your fingers and automatically... You know, be making money and live in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. That's not how it works. You have to have some skin in the game. You have to work for things that you want. Those who perpetuate the myth of white privilege tell you otherwise. That your, your advantages, that you, your benefits that you have in life are more to do with the color of your skin really than anything else. Now, there are so many different arguments, ladies and gentlemen, that, that people try to make uh, to perpetuate the myth of white privilege. So many different arguments, and I want to break down a few of them right here and right now. The first, and I'm sure you've heard these two. The first is that, uh, you know, they say financial instability among some minority groups is the result of white privilege. Have you heard that one before? I have. The fact that more minorities are, are poor in this country than, uh, than non-minorities. That's, that's an example of white privilege. Here's the response to this. And this is just common sense. I'll get into some facts in a, in a few minutes. But this is just common sense. Our capitalist system, right? Our, our free market system, which, by the way, has lifted more people out of poverty than any other any other system on earth our free market system is colorblind capitalism is colorblind that's the beauty of it folks it doesn't look at things like the color of your skin furthermore it doesn't look at things like gender it doesn't look at things like sexual orientation 
or anything like that. The only thing capitalism pays attention to is innovation, is talent, is skill, is your, is your desire to work hard and make something of your life. And anyone can make something of their life. That, that's what is so great about America, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's so great about this country. If you want to succeed, you can succeed. Capitalism is colorblind. I'm sorry, but if you're not doing good in life, then you have to take some responsibility for that. You have to, there, there have been plenty, peop, uh, plenty of people in this country who were born into, into uh, you know, poor families who got a, a, a rough start and really made something of their lives and grew up and became lawyers or doctors or, or uh, had some kind of you know, tremendous success. It's possible. It happens frequently, as a matter of fact. So I just wanted to get that out there. Now, also on the issue of, uh, you know, financial instability. The Brookings Institute. It's a nonprofit organization aimed at, according to their website, solving problems facing society on a local, national, and global level. They found that in order uh, to uh, uh, lift yourself out of poverty, really all you have to do is three things. If you don't want to live in poverty, they found that all you have to do is three things. Number one, finish high school. Number two, get a job. And number three, wait to have a child. Three things, finish high school, get a job, wait to have a child. Now, statistically speaking, statistically speaking, minorities in this country, and you can look up these facts, are less likely to finish high school than whites are, and uh, more likely to have a child out of wedlock before they are ready than whites are. These are statistics. So, if anything, that's what plays a role in, in, uh, in, in uh, financial instability, not white privilege. It's, it's your life decisions. It's who you choose to be. It's what you choose to do. There, there has to be some, a, a level of personal responsibility here, folks. White privilege seems to take all of that away and blame everything on skin color. And that, to me, is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Another argument that you hear is that white people get treated more fairly under the law. And frankly, I could spend an entire show on this alone. Uh, I'll do that some other time. But for the sake of time, I'll just leave you with this. According to Peter Moskos, he's a professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. He found that between May of 2013 and April of 2015, 49% of those killed by police were white, 30% were black, 19% were Hispanic, and 2% were either Asian or another race. He said, quote, if one adjusts for the racial disparity in the homicide rate or the rate at which police are feloniously killed, whites are actually more likely to be killed by police than blacks. And again, this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg, folks. Again, I could spend an entire show talking about this, and I probably will sometime, debunking the myth that somehow our criminal justice system is racist, our law enforcement is racist, and uh, if you get treated more fairly under the law, it's because of white privilege. Furthermore, I think it's important to note that black-on-black -black crime um, is a significant problem that most people who talk about white privilege, never address. The third argument that you hear a lot, I've heard a lot, is that people of color are disproportionately pulled over by the police. This is not necessarily true. The facts point to something other than white privilege going on here. 
According to a study done by the New Jersey Department of Justice, people of color amounted for 25% of all the people speeding and 23% of all those receiving speeding tickets. So it's pretty even. 25% of the time, minorities are the ones speeding and they receive tickets 23% of the time. So what, what's the racism going on there? How is this an example of white privilege exactly? It seems pretty even to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is just, this is just, you know, uh, uh, skimming the surface here. I, I could spend a, a very, very long time. I could spend probably about an hour talking about uh, this issue and debunking the myths. And I'll do that in the future. I really will, because there's a lot more to get to. But I just wanted to uh, take this segment to tell you that this whole white privilege thing is uh, a bunch of bullcrap. It really is. It's nothing more than a way to point the finger at white people and say, you didn't get where you are because of hard work or determination or anything like that. You got there because of skin color. And they'll tell you that they're not trying to shame you, that they're not trying to shame whites, but they really are. Here's the truth. We are all Americans. Let's stop calling uh, uh, each other white or black. Let's stop saying you're privileged because you're this color or you're not privileged because you're this color. Let's just say, hey, we're all Americans. We live in the greatest country on earth. We live in a free society. And because of that, we all have the ability to pursue happiness and rise up. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, did you know that love trumps hate? Did you know that? Did you know love trumps hate? Did you know that the Democrats, the liberals opposed to Donald Trump, are, are really just the most compassionate, understanding people on, on the face of the earth? Did you know all this? Breitbart.com. A Dallas public school teacher was filmed in her classroom, mockingly shooting President Donald Trump as a live feed was projected of his inauguration ceremony. In the short clip, the teacher can be heard shrieking, saying the word die, and then routinely shooting at the projected image of Trump with a toy gun. Watch this, it's only uh, eight seconds. She seems kind of immature, doesn't she? I mean, she, she seems like she's, uh, you know, like, a, uh, like an eight-year-old playing with a toy gun who's, uh, who's whining about the new president. Then again, I think it's fair to say that most liberals resemble eight-year-olds, whining and complaining and crying about this and crying about that. Um, could you imagine? Let, let, me, let me set the tone for you. Could you imagine in 2009, January of 2009, when Barack Obama was being inaugurated, could you imagine if a professor was caught on camera holding a gun to a projecting, uh, projection of Barack Obama and shooting him and saying, die, die, die? Could you imagine? The double standard here is, is really incredible. Uh, let's see. The Dallas Independent School District confirmed to Breitbart, Texas in a written statement the person depicted is indeed a uh, DISD employee at WH uh, Adamson High School. Uh, by the way, DISD stands for Dallas Independent School District. She's an, she's an employee at WH uh, Adamson High School, um, but they wouldn't share more until its investigation was complete. The teacher has been placed on administrative leave. Wonderful. I'm just saying that if it was... Uh, on the flip side, if it was a conservative shooting a gun at Barack Obama in front of class, this would be all over the news. This would be primetime news on CNN, ABC, NBC, uh, all of them. It really would. But because it's a leftist uh, shooting a gun at Donald Trump, we hear crickets. It's incredible, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very, very much for watching. The first week of Beely TV is officially over. I'll be back on Monday 
New episodes released every weeknight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget to check out my radio show. And also, youthrevolt.org. Youthrevolt.org. All of the archives are up there. And also, subscribe to me on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. Like this video. Comment. I'll see you Monday, everybody. God bless. If you think that what Donald Trump is doing is Islamophobic and nothing else. In other words, if, if you believe that there's no other motives here, nothing else going on other than Donald Trump is a racist and Islamophobe and that's why he's doing it. You're really pretty stupid.